Hello again, everyone. Today I'm going to be reading you a book called A Computer Called Catherine. How Catherine Johnson Helped Put America on the Moon. Now this is a true story. This is a book about someone's life. And we call a book that's about somebody's life a biography. Um, I have a lot of biographies in the library and I love to read about real people. And if you love biographies in the library, if you go to the number 921, you can find books about all kinds of people. But this day's book is about Katherine Johnson. And I first learned about her much like the author in a movie called Hidden Figures. And so if you love math and if you love space, you're going to love this book. So I hope that you like it as much as I do. It's a computer called Catherine, written by Suzanne Slade, and it was illustrated by Veronica Miller Jameson. All right, so here we go. Everywhere she went, Catherine counted. She counted her steps to church. She counted the plates on the dinner table. She even tried counting the stars in the sky. Do you think she counted all the stars in the sky? That's a pretty big number. Most important of all, Catherine counted the days until she could start school. Finally, at age five, she followed her brother, hundreds of steps, to the two-room schoolhouse. An excellent student, Catherine devoured thick books and added numbers at the speed of light, so the teacher decided that she would skip first grade and start school in the second. But Catherine was such a fast learner, she later skipped fifth grade too. And before you could say mathematician magician, she was a grade ahead of her older brother. Okay, so Catherine was so smart. She just really adapted to school and she just kind of do stuff really quickly. And so she would skip grades here and there um, because she could just do the work. Catherine loved math because it was easy to see if an answer was right or wrong. Meanwhile, most everybody in town was arguing about right and wrong. Some people said it was wrong for children with different skin colors to attend the same school. Others said it wasn't right for women to work at the same jobs as men. Their arguments seemed wrong to Catherine, as wrong as 5 plus 5 equals 12. Does 5 plus 5 equal 12? No, 5 plus 5 equals 10. So Catherine thought that the idea that children couldn't go to school together or that women couldn't do the same jobs as men, Catherine didn't like that way of thinking whatsoever. Okay, She believed everyone should be treated the same. So she kept working hard in school and dreamed of a future where all people would have equal rights. And you see all those people fighting over who should go where and do what? we all just got treated the same, we wouldn't have to worry about these things. Catherine finished eighth grade when she was only 10 years old, but her town didn't have a high school for black students. Determined to keep learning, she counted the dusty miles, 120 in all, as her family moved closer to a school that she could attend. Then she took an exciting math class called geometry. She learned how points and lines made shapes, triangles, trapezoids, and perfect parallelograms. So Catherine's family thought it was so important that she be able to continue going to school that they moved closer to a school that she was able to attend. And she really loved geometry class. And you can see all the shapes. You'll learn about geometry, geometry one of these days real soon, but you kind of learn how these shapes are put together and what the angles mean and how they can be used to build things and do certain jobs. Okay. At 15, Catherine started college. Can you believe that? At 15 years old, Catherine was already going to college. She flew through every math class at West Virginia State, so a professor taught harder classes just for her. In advanced geometry, she plotted points on a graph. When she connected the points, they created a beautiful U-shaped cur curve called a parabola. It was love at first sight. After graduation, Catherine became a math teacher. But back then, people said women could only be teachers or nurses. Catherine knew that was wrong, 
as wrong as 10 minus 5 equals 3. If you have 10 and you take away 5, that does not equal 3. 10 minus 5 equals what, everybody? 5. Okay? She believed that women could be anything. Scientists, lawyers, or mathematicians. So it's great to be a nurse or a teacher, but she thought, well, hey, if I want to do something different, I should be able to do that. Okay? So she set out to prove it. Okay, Catherine uses math to prove a lot of things, and her life was all about proving things that people said couldn't be done. Catherine discovered a research center in Virginia that was hiring women mathematicians. They were called computers because they made calculations that helped the men engineers design airplanes and flight plans. So she worked at Langley Aeronautical Laboratory. And so the women were kind of doing the work of a calculator, and they called them computers. But really, they were helping design um, aircraft and flight plans for, um, for astronauts. Now, to Catherine, this added up to a perfect job. All day long, she punched buttons on a calculator just like the other women. She solved long math equations just like the other women. She wrote answers on huge data sheets just like the other women. And there are lots of women who were working at this job and doing math to help out the astronauts. But Catherine wasn't like the other women. She asked questions, lots of questions. What were her calculations used for? Why were they important? How did her answers help design airplanes and flights? Catherine doesn't just stop with, here's the work I just did. She wants to know, what is this used for? Why am I doing this? So she had lots of questions. The men engineers noticed the woman who asked intelligent questions and how quickly that she solved difficult math problems. So they asked Catherine to join their space team. Its mission sent America's first astronaut into space. Catherine said yes. Then she discovered that women weren't allowed to attend the group's meetings. She knew that this was wrong, as wrong as 5 times 5 equals 20. Now, what that means is if you have 5 groups of 5, you know, it doesn't equal 20. So let's do 5 groups of 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So 5 times 5 equals 25, everybody. All right, so she asked if she could go. She thought, how am I supposed to do my job if I can't go to the meetings that other people get to go to? Women don't ever go to those, the engineers replied. Is there a law against it? Catherine asked. No. I wonder what Catherine does. Do you think she doesn't go to the meetings, or do you think that she does go to the meetings? Well, so Catherine showed up at the next meeting ready to work. Astounded by her geometry skills, the team asked her to calculate when America's first space... Uh, let me just repeat that sentence. It was a mouthful. All right. Astounded by her geometry skills, the team asked her to calculate when America's first space flight should blast off. Catherine agreed. But first, she asked questions like, Where should the rocket splash down? How high up should it fly? When should it land? She needs to know where it's taken off from, where it's going to land, how long it's going to take, how high it's going to go. She needs all of these numbers so that she can do the right math problem. You know, if you put the wrong numbers in a math problem, are you going to get the right answer? You are not. So Catherine has a lot of questions. All right. With that information, Catherine carefully computed the rocket's flight path, a beautiful U-shaped curve. Next, she worked backwards to figure out the time that it should blast off. Then she began counting the days until launch. On May the 5th, 1961, Alan Shepard blasted off. Following Catherine's flight path, he soared into the silvery sky. Fifteen minutes later, he splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean right on schedule and right on target. So Catherine used math to figure out where he should take off from, where he was supposed to land, and she, you know, she was right. He landed exactly where she said he would. 
And if you think about how big the earth is and he could have landed anywhere, I mean, that math really did help them figure out what was going to happen. And she was right on target. Soon Americans began dreaming of a longer flight around the entire earth. To figure out the math for this long, complicated trip, engineers decided to use their new room-sized computer that worked much faster than people. But astronaut John Glenn trusted Catherine more than a machine. He wouldn't stand one foot on the rocket until she said that the computer's calculations were correct. Happy to help, Catherine checked every number. So um, the astronaut, John Glenn, he had so much faith in her work, he said, you know, I'm glad the computer has come up with this number, but I am not even going to get on the rocket until Catherine tells me that the computer's right, because he trusted her. She was so smart, and he believed in her so much that he wanted to make sure that the computer was right, and this is who he trusted to do it, was Catherine. On February 20th, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. And by orbit the Earth, they mean go all the way around it. And so he went all the way around it in a spaceship. So that's pretty neat. Then people began wondering if an astronaut could travel all the way to the moon. But the Soviet, excuse me, both the Soviet Union and the United States wanted to be the very first to land there and win the space race. The space race was a time when America and Russia were both trying to figure out how to get to the moon first and so they were racing to see who would win to get to the moon first. Okay. Catherine knew that this flight was incredibly long and dangerous. Every calculation would have to be perfect. One math mistake and the rocket was zoomed right past the moon. If the rocket went right past the moon, it would keep on going into space and those astronauts wouldn't be able to come back to Earth. So sometimes we think, well, if I make a mistake on my math problem, it's not that big of a deal. Do you think if Catherine made a mistake on her math problem to send somebody to the moon, would that be a big deal? It was. And so sometimes when you're doing math for the purpose of something like space travel, your math has to be right. You've got to really know what you're doing. Okay, do you think Catherine can figure it out? Given what you've read so far, do you think Catherine's the person for this job? I think she is. As NASA's computer hummed and computed a flight path to the moon and back, Catherine went to work too, double-checking the machine's calculations. But this was the most complicated geometry problem that she had ever seen. One of the points, the spacecraft was flying incredibly fast. Her target, the moon, was constantly circling the Earth while spinning. Some people thought the problem was too difficult to solve, but Catherine knew that that was wrong, as wrong as 25 divided by 5 equals 4. If you take 25 and you divide it into 5 equal parts, it's going to equal 5, not 4. So Catherine knew that it was wrong. She could solve this problem. She calculated and computed. She plotted. She planned. She created a bold, brave path all the way to the moon and back. So it's not just getting to the moon. You want to make sure that the people who go to the moon can get back to the earth to see their families again. Ten. Nine. Ignition sequence starts. Heart racing, Catherine leaned close to the small television screen. Seven. Six. She held her breath as powerful flames exploded on the launch pad. Four, three, two, one, lift off. The rumbling rocket slowly rose above the ground, above the smoke, above the clouds, and then disappeared into ink black space. And so now she's got to see if her math worked out. Four days later, as Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon, Catherine smiled and began to count. So Catherine did get um, Neil Armstrong to the moon, and she got Neil Armstrong home from the moon. And it says this, that, that's the end of the story, um, but it says this, girls are capable of doing everything men are capable of doing. And that's one thing she said, and these are her flight plans 
um, that Catherine made and it shows her flight plans to the moon and over on this page is a timeline so if you wanted to go back and look at when Catherine did different things in her life you could look at this timeline and just get like a little idea of the things that she did throughout her life all the way from 1915 when Na um, the NASA department was created until she won the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama in 2015. So it gives you a nice idea of her life all summed up on one page. So timelines are nice if you're in a hurry and you just need some details. And then the author gives a note about how they came up with the story at the end um, and they thank their families. Sometimes authors like to do that at the end of the book. And then it shows some math. All right, so that is the story of Katherine Johnson. I hope that you like this biography. I, you know, I love biographies, and I think that they can teach us a lot. And sometimes when I look at someone like Katherine, I think, gosh, it must be neat to be that good at something, that smart at math. But each and every one of you have a gift, something that you're really good at. You just have to work really hard and learn all that you can so that you can become the best person that you can be, just like Katherine became the best mathematician that she could be, and she changed the world. So you guys out there, um, keep on working hard. And you can live your life like Catherine and never give up and go for all your dreams. And if you like learning about Catherine Johnson, you can come to the library and check this book out. Um, or if you would like to learn about other famous people, you can come see who we have books about in the library. And I hope to see y'all in there real soon. All right. Have a great rest of your day.